pardon me, I did have to uh, modify the old brackets quite a bit, right? So that they're the same size as the as the new brackets. Plus the studs that I put in there are uh, they're slightly twisted, so they need a little bigger throat to be installed. Okay, barring any gas leaks, I just put. I had to just uh, for some reason this the needle wasn't meshing with the seat. And I've had this running before, so it's not. This is just an assembly problem. We should be good. A little tiny bit of prime should get a leak. Yeah. Choke. Okay, I ran it for about five minutes. Should start without choke now, right? <laughs> okay, we're getting there. It's running a little better as it sits. This thing I think has sat for probably 15 years, eh? So I do think it might need a valve adjustment, like take the head off and uh, adjust the valves. There's probably uh, the intake or the exhaust is staying open a little too long. Did you see the fire coming out of the exhaust manifold or the exhaust port? Muffler, I guess. Anyway, thanks. So. All right, you guys are precariously sitting on my little uh, rolling seat. <sighs> it's been sitting for a half an hour. No leaks on the on the little on the little uh, blue. That's what I use. I use the blue leak, blue guys for leaks. Let's just go three quarter choke. Yeah, three quarter choke. We'll see if she runs. Good. Now, I was going to use my spare Tecumseh engine for parts. This is finally the, the, uh, the end of phase one on this rebuild, right? Not rebuild, reconditioning. I'm getting tired of the word rebuild because rebuild is where you change everything. Now let's just, uh, this guy's not going to start because he hasn't got fuel in him. But he's got oil. I'm just going to turn them over to make sure that, because I had all this off. I had the tank, I had the starter, I had the uh, starter mount, and I found enough hardware to put it all back together in. Let's just make sure this turns this engine over. Sounds good. It's just, it's knocking on the steel table. Okay, so we're back in control here, guys. We might even be able to build a snowblower here one of these days. Isn't that cool? Thank you. This has been a struggle for me. That, uh, that, that starter, I don't have to have a starter, but when it's cold out and if it's been sitting outside overnight or something, you can just honk on that starter and put the choke on and squirt it with the primer and away you go. So anyway, thanks a lot guys. We're done for the day. I'm tuckered. Furnace alert. All right, I'm gonna turn this on. It was off, full choke. But we had good news overnight. No leaks onto the clock at all.
still not sure whether I'm going to do a valve job on it or not. That's called a power tune. All right, I'm going to take this flywheel off the back of this. These four bolts, one, two, and three, four on the other side, I'm going to pull the auger forward because I want to get some, uh, what do you call it? I want to get some anti-seize on the shaft and the bearing I know how hard these things are to take apart once they've been sitting for a couple of years. On both my John Deere snowblowers, one from 10 years ago and one from now, I've had to, a pulley didn't work, heat didn't work, torch didn't work. I actually had to, on the, I think on the John Deere one, I had to almost saw it off or, I don't know, beating it off is the wrong word. I'm just going to uh, reach down in here and undo, whoop, Go at an angle. No, that doesn't do anything. I'm going to go at an angle and loosen this Allen key. Good. There's two of them. A lot of guys forget that. <coughs> Pardon me, a lot of guys forget that. And they, uh, they yank that pulley out there without the second Allen key or grub screw coming off. Okay, that's both loose. Look at that, isn't that a beautiful thing, eh? But look at how small that grub screw key is, eh? Alright, that's one, step one. <coughs> Excuse me, I swallowed it. I had an old chunk of pizza for lunch. Not an old, a yesterday's pizza. the two screws off of here, bolts, and <coughs> same on the other side, and it's going to drop and be ugly, okay? There we go. And I'm going to pull this out. That's all there is to it, baby. I'm going to back this up. Take my, uh, what do you call it, anti -seize. Now you guys can come over here. We're just going to put some anti -seize on this bad boy. I want to show you something. Do you see that path right there? grooved into the shaft. That's because the guy who took this apart did not undo that second grub screw. I hope you saw it. Anyway, it's right there. There's a groove. Cut right into there. Woohoo! Tiny bit more. And after doing this for so many years, I'm really starting to understand the reason for torquing. The reason for torquing, like let's say a head bolt is 16.67 uh, foot-pounds or 200 inch-pounds or whatever, and then your, uh, your assembly bolts aren't heaved on like they were the last thing on earth. The reason for that is so that you can disassemble and assemble something multiple times. So this is just safety, right? All, all this is is appeasing my, I gotta do that thing. There, that's all there was to that. And I've always said this, hey, it's weird that the lid never sticks to the anti seize so now I'm going to just come back in a bit. All right, my friends. So, so the shaft coming through here, it's going to move, but it's going to move with the bearing. So that, uh, I know I'm speaking loud because of the furnace, but I always speak loud. Um, 
if it was spinning in here and you'd want grease. But because it's locked in with a key, with the flywheel key, actually, uh, there's no movement here, so you, you don't want rust and stuff to build up on it to the point where you can't get it to turn again. That's that. And that, that uh, anti-seize gets over everything. Now we're going to see if we can set this up for high noon. The key way, and we're going to try to put this back together again. There it is. That's it. Now we just have to line up the shaft with the keyway. Okay. So our keyway is at three o'clock, and our shaft. I wonder which one can move easier. If you guys are getting any of this. Good. There should be a allowable movement there. One more. I'm going to put just a tiny bit more anti seize on there, but I can use this anti seize. This goes on. I'm going to put it on as tight as I can, finger tight, and I'm not going to wrench tight it, wrench tighten it until I actually get it onto the snowblower because I'm going to put. Uh, Red Loctite on these grub screws. What? Oh, there we go. Now that should spin as good as before. Which direction does the engine spin that be? Spins this clock. Good. Alright, I don't know where you guys should be, but you're looking, we're going to introduce this flange into here and secure it with these bolts. Now these bottom bolts are meant to be screwed in right away, like that, and then as, I'll show you in just one second, you get the tire bending over on this job, I want to get it up on the lip. Now, at the same time, we have to make sure that these, uh, what do you call those, mm. keepers, the belt comes this side of the keeper and this side of the keeper. So I set them almost too wide, but they, they may not have to be adjusted again. So now we've got the bolts in the bottom, and I have to be careful. This is a finger pincher. That's a slot in the main machine, right? In the engine portion of the machine. There we go. This should be a two-person job. I should probably go get Mrs. P. got to have the belt on there before you get going because you can't squeeze the belt on after. Ah, my angle of the dangle's wrong. Okay, i got to use your chair. So you guys are now going to be watching from the little chair. That belt's going to be way too long. No? Okay, so that's the wrong belt. John Deere said it was the right belt. Well, let's get an ID. Maybe we should put it together, just to au temporaire, with one bolt, and measure that belt. All right, my belt was the wrong size, about two inches too long, right? So now the scary part. 
And I've got this held with a bungee cord. That's got to save me. So let's undo that. Just a little. We still have the pivot. This thing weighs more than me now, you guys. Take this bolt out. Set it on the counter. And now, we're going to put our foot in here and hold this back. Good. I want to just get that out of there without seeing how bad off I am here. Good. Okay. Look at the control I've got there. I want to try a smaller belt, right? Good. And then around the eider. Onto there and around the eider while I bring this together. Oh, she's gonna go. Might still be too long. But we are looking pretty. Don't forget the, uh, the eider pulley is not pushing against the belt right now. So let's release this handle. So that's a 30 inside measurement. I got some work to do, but by gosh, are we we're getting close, eh? All right, my friends, I'm just taking a little break from these pulley actions here. I'm having, I'm struggling with the pulleys and the, and the belts. So we're going to get a three-eighths ratchet wrench. I'm not going to nag you about it. You're cool. Looks pretty darn good. You can just tell at a glance, eh? Somebody's been in here and cleaned it up already. Okay, I'm just gonna do a small, a small cleanup. That's cool. shaft a tiny bit. Cobweb. Oh, that's too much. We've got some on the plate. Here, we'll get the dry part. Then we'll change gears. We'll see that. Down to number one. Oh, there's even a neutral on this guy. Should be dead center, right? And we'll just get a tiny bit of gas on this rag here. Wipe this off, and we'll squirt this guy. Bushing. Pushing there. And a little tiny bit on the gear. We don't want to go crazy, right? Right on. Okay. Good. I'm happy. Now I'm just going to wipe out this dish. See, the, there's no uh, traces of belt, just a little bit of traces of belt in there. Not bad. Yeah. Now we just need two screws and the drill. So if I ever get this thing figured out on the Pulley slash. On the pulley slash belt keeper slash neutral thing.
Good. I'm just going to squirt a little more oil on the outside of these bushings. Good. Now we're going to bring that back down to earth. And we're going to see if we can get this gear thing figured out. find all the bolts. One, two, three, yes we did. We're going to use them all too. We're going to use our half inch wrench with our light. We're going to fix this bad boy now. So I'll, when I get it I'll show you what I've done. It's taken me too many hours. Okay, a, a good friend of mine gave me this set of wrenches. Some of you guys have seen it. They're Blue Point, which is like Snap-on, same manufacturer I think. This is the cable adjuster for the uh, auger drive, and I've taken it up about four turns. I'm going to take it up another three. One, two, three. And that should take it to the point where there's no slack left in, in the bar, or in the cable, sorry. This connects to here. Right? And then this other one, if you uh, squeeze this up, there we go. And how I've been testing it, we're not getting any rotation on the, on the auger. So I still got to go more. Alright, this is going to mess you guys up. <laughs> Two belts. One is an inch longer than the other one measured with the tape measure. This one, depending on the measurement, 29 on the inside, 31 on the outside. And this one is 28 and 30. This one is so small, the idler pulley can't release it to neutral. And this one is so long, it just flops and the idler just bends it and it won't tighten it up. I gotta go see a belt expert. Part of the problem, I'm sure, is that this pulley right down here, if you can see it, let's get the light. Use the light, folks. Right there, that's probably, that's the wrong belt, but I should be able to get something to work. <laughs> Crazy. Thanks. Okay, guys, I missed one thing right there. There's some adjustment in that idler, but it's all the way over. And it, but it does pick up the slack. Watch this. Look at that. So that a driver. Not happy with it. But beggars can't be choosers. Now I can actually order online the proper belt. But it does go round and round. Thank you. All right. Don't mind the furnace, please. We got a gift. It's an annual gift that I get from. A gentleman by the name of Daryl. I wonder if I can uh, just peel this or big year for space flight. He lives he lives down in rocket country. Oop. Wow, how did he do that? Oh. All right, NASA 2023 calendar. Concludes a complete collection of all human spaceflight missions. Look at that. And every year he sends me one because he knows that I'm a I'm a follower. Can't hang this till the first. Wrap it good. Look at that, huh?
Ha! Ah. So anyway, Daryl, I will take a real good look at this after the camera stops rolling. I think December was the big one, right? Or when did they send the Artemis up? Moon rocket, right? Anyway, very, very cool. Thank you again, sir. A little glare. I appreciate I appreciate all your emails and everything you do. Thank you so much. Alright. Years ago I put this up. At this establishment we do things three ways. I hope you can see it. Cheap, fast, and perfect, but you only have the choice of two out of three. Cheap and fast, not perfect. Cheap and perfect, not fast. Fast and perfect, not cheap. So anyway, Mrs. P got this for me for Christmas. Isn't that cool? Right there, zing, I hope you got it. $25 an hour, standard. $150 an hour if you watch. $175 an hour if you help. $200 if you worked on it first. And $250 if you lied about working on it first. And we all joke about that, you guys. That's pretty funny, eh? So I hope you got that. hope you can read it. And uh, thanks a lot for being part of my world. Burn us on.